Ammonita Falloids, Wikipedia article audio. Ammonita Falloids slash A-E-M-N-A-T-F-L-D-I-Z slash, commonly known as the death cap, is a deadly poisonous basidiomycete fungus, one of many in the genus Ammonita. Widely distributed across Europe, A. Falloids forms ectomycorrhizas with various broad leaved trees. In some cases, the death cap has been introduced to new regions with the cultivation of non-native species of oak, chestnut, and pine. The large fruiting bodies appear in summer and autumn, the caps are generally greenish in color with a white stipe and gills. Cap color is variable, including white forms and thus not a reliable identifier. These toxic mushrooms resemble several edible species commonly consumed by humans, increasing the risk of accidental poisoning. Omatoxins, the class of toxins found in these mushrooms, are thermostable, they resist changes due to heat, so their toxic effects are not reduced by cooking. Taxonomy and Naming Description a. Falloids is one of the most poisonous of all known toadstools. It is estimated that as little as half a mushroom contains enough toxin to kill an adult human. It has been involved in the majority of human deaths from mushroom poisoning, possibly including the deaths of Roman Emperor Claudius in AD 54 and Holy Roman Emperor Charles VI in 1740. It has been the subject of much research, and many of its biologically active agents have been isolated. The principal toxic constituent is alpha-ammonitin, which damages the liver and kidneys, causing hepatic and renal failure that can be fatal. The death cap is named in Latin as such in the correspondence between the English physician Thomas Brown and Christopher Merritt and was described by French botanist Sebastian Valiant in 1727, who gave a succinct phrase name fungus falloids, annulatus, sordide viris sens, et patulus, which is still recognizable as the fungus today. Though the scientific name falloids means phallus-shaped, it is unclear whether it is named for its resemblance to a literal phallus or the stinkhorn mushroom's phallus. In 1821, Elias Magnus Fries described it as Agaricus falloids, but included all white ammonitas within its description. Finally in 1833, Johann Heinrich Friedrich Link settled on the name Ammonita falloids, after Persoon had named it Ammonita voridis 30 years earlier. Although Louis Secretan's use of the name Ammonita falloids predates Lynx, it has been rejected for nomenclatural purposes because Secretan's works did not use binomial nomenclature consistently, some taxonomists have, however, disagreed with this opinion. Ammonita falloids is the type species of Ammonita section Phalloidea, a group that contains all of the deadly poisonous Ammonita species thus far identified. Most notable of these are the species known as destroying angels, namely Ammonita virosa and Ammonita bisporitra, as well as the fool's mushroom. The term destroying angel has been applied to A. falloids at times but death cap is by far the most common vernacular name used in English. Other common names also listed include stinking ammonita and deadly ammonita. A rarely appearing, all-white form was initially described a falloids F. alba by Max Britzel Mayer, though its status has been unclear. It is often found growing amid normally colored death caps. It has been described, in 2004, as a distinct variety and includes what was termed a vernivar. Tarda The true Ammonita verna fruits in spring and turns yellow with KOH solution, whereas a falloids never does. Cap is convex. 
Distribution and Habitat The death cap has a large and imposing epigeous fruiting body, usually with a pileus from 5 to 15 cm across, initially rounded and hemispherical, but flattening with age. The color of the cap can be pale, yellowish, or olive green, often paler toward the margins and often paler after rain. The cap surface is sticky when wet and easily peeled, a troublesome feature, as that is allegedly a feature of edible fungi. The remains of the partial veil are seen as a skirt-like, floppy annulus usually about 1.0 to 1.5 cm below the cap. The crowded white lamellae are free. The stipe is white with a scattering of grayish olive scales and is 8 to 15 cm long and 1 to 2 cm thick, with a swollen, ragged, sac-like white vulva. As the vulva, which may be hidden by leaf litter, is a distinctive and diagnostic feature, it is important to remove some debris to check for it. The smell has been described as initially faint and honey-sweet, but strengthening over time to become overpowering, sickly sweet and objectionable. Young specimens first emerge from the ground resembling a white egg covered by a universal veil, which then breaks, leaving the vulva as a remnant. The spore print is white, a common feature of Ammonita. The transparent spores are globular to egg-shaped, measure 8-10 mm long, and stain blue with iodine. The gills, in contrast, stain pallid lilac or pink with concentrated sulfuric acid. Toxicity The death cap is native to Europe, where it is widespread. It is found from the southern coastal regions of Scandinavia in the north, to Ireland in the west, east to Poland and western Russia, and south throughout the Balkans, in Italy, Spain, and Portugal, and in Morocco and Algeria in North Africa. In West Asia it has been reported from forests of northern Iran. There are records from further east in Asia but these have yet to be confirmed as a phalloids. It is ectomycorrhizally associated with several tree species and is symbiotic with them. In Europe, these include hardwood and, less frequently, conifer species. It appears most commonly under oaks, but also under beeches, chestnuts, horse chestnuts, birches, filberts, hornbeams, pines, and spruces. In other areas, aphalloids may also be associated with these trees or with only some species and not others. In coastal California, for example, aphalloids is associated with coast live oak, but not with the various coastal pine species, such as Monterey pine. In countries where it has been introduced, it has been restricted to those exotic trees with which it would associate in its natural range. There is, however, evidence of aphalloids associating with hemlock and with genera of the Myrtaceae, eucalyptus in Tanzania and Algeria, and Leptospermum and Kuntzia in New Zealand. This suggests the species may have invasive potential. By the end of the 19th century, Charles Horton Peck had reported a phalloids in North America. In 1918, samples from the eastern United States were identified as being a distinct though similar species, a Brunssens, by G. F. Atkinson of Cornell University. By the 1970s, it had become clear that a phalloids does occur in the United States apparently having been introduced from Europe alongside chestnuts, with populations on the west and east coasts. Although a 2006 historical review concluded the east coast populations were introduced, the origins of the west coast populations remained unclear, due to scant historical records.
A 2009 genetic study provided strong evidence for the introduced status of the fungus on the west coast of North America. Similarity to Edible Species Ammonita phalloids has been conveyed to new countries across the southern hemisphere with the importation of hardwoods and conifers. Introduced oaks appear to have been the vector to Australia and South America. Populations under oaks have been recorded from Melbourne and Canberra and Adelaide, as well as Uruguay. It has been recorded under other introduced trees in Argentina and Chile. Pine plantations are associated with the fungus in Tanzania and South Africa, where it is also found under oaks and poplars. Biochemistry As the common name suggests, the fungus is highly toxic, and is responsible for the majority of fatal mushroom poisonings worldwide. Its biochemistry has been researched intensively for decades, and 30 grams, or half a cap, of this mushroom is estimated to be enough to kill a human. In 2006, a family of three in Poland was poisoned resulting in one death and the two survivors requiring liver transplants. In 2017, 14 people in California were poisoned, including an 18-month-old who required a liver transplant. Some authorities strongly advise against putting suspected death caps in the same basket with fungi collected for the table and to avoid even touching them. Furthermore, the toxicity is not reduced by cooking, freezing, or drying. Signs and Symptoms In general, poisoning incidents are unintentional and result from errors in identification. Recent cases highlight the issue of the similarity of a phalloids to the edible paddy straw mushroom, Valvariella valvacea, with East and Southeast Asian immigrants in Australia and the west coast of the United States falling victim. In an episode in Oregon, four members of a Korean family required liver transplants. Of the nine people poisoned in the Canberra region between 1988 and 2011, three were from Laos and two were from China. Novices may mistake juvenile death caps for edible puffballs or mature specimens for other edible Ammonita species, such as A. Lanii, so some authorities recommend avoiding the collecting of Ammonita species for the table altogether. The white form of aphalloids may be mistaken for edible species of agaricus, especially the young fruit bodies whose unexpanded caps conceal the telltale white gills, all mature species of agaricus have dark colored gills. Treatment In Europe, other similarly green-capped species collected by mushroom hunters include various green-hued brittle gills of the genus Rasula and the formerly popular Tricoloma equister, now regarded as hazardous owing to a series of restaurant poisonings in France. Brittle gills, such as Rasula heterophylla, R. aerogenia, and R. viris sens, can be distinguished by their brittle flesh and the lack of both vulva and ring. Other similar species include A. subjunquilliae in Eastern Asia and A. aroki, which ranges from Andean Colombia north at least as far as central Mexico, both of which are also poisonous. In January 2012, four people were accidentally poisoned when death caps were served at a New Year's Eve dinner party in Canberra, Australia. All the victims required hospital treatment and two of them died, with a third requiring a liver transplant. The species is now known to contain two main groups of toxins, both multicyclic peptides, spread throughout the mushroom tissue, the omatoxins and the phallotoxins. Another toxin is phallolicin, which has shown some hemolytic activity in vitro. An unrelated compound, antimanide, has also been isolated. Omatoxins consist of at least eight compounds with a similar structure, 
that of eight amino acid rings, they were isolated in 1941 by Heinrich Ovilant and Rudolf Hallermeyer of the University of Munich. Of the amatoxins, alpha-aminidin is the chief component and along with beta-aminidin is likely responsible for the toxic effects. Their major toxic mechanism is the inhibition of RNA polymerase II, a vital enzyme in the synthesis of messenger RNA, MICR ORNA, and small nuclear RNA. Without mRNA, essential protein synthesis and hence cell metabolism grind to a halt and the cell dies. The liver is the principal organ affected, as it is the organ which is first encountered after absorption in the gastrointestinal tract, though other organs, especially the kidneys, are susceptible. The RNA polymerase of Amanita folloids is insensitive to the effects of amatoxins, so the mushroom does not poison itself. The phallotoxins consist of at least seven compounds, all of which have seven similar peptide rings. Phalloidin was isolated in 1937 by Pfeiffer Lenin, Heinrich Vilant S. student and son-in-law and Ulrich Vilant of the University of Munich. Though phallotoxins are highly toxic to liver cells, they have since been found to add little to the death caps toxicity, as they are not absorbed through the gut. Furthermore, phalloidin is also found in the edible blusher. Another group of minor active peptides are the virotoxins, which consist of six similar monocyclic heptapeptides. Like the phallotoxins, they do not induce any acute toxicity after ingestion in humans. Notable Victims The genome of the death cap has been sequenced. Death caps have been reported to taste pleasant. This, coupled with the delay in the appearance of symptoms during which time internal organs are being severely, sometimes irreparably, damaged makes it particularly dangerous. Initially, symptoms are gastrointestinal in nature and include colicky abdominal pain, with watery diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, which may lead to dehydration if left untreated, and, in severe cases, hypotension, tachycardia, hypoglycemia, and acid-base disturbances. These first symptoms resolve two to three days after the ingestion. A more serious deterioration signifying liver involvement may then occur jaundice, diarrhea, delirium, seizures, and coma due to fulminant liver failure and attendant hepatic encephalopathy caused by the accumulation of normally liver-removed substance in the blood. Kidney failure or caused by direct toxic kidney damage and coagulopathy may appear during this stage. Life-threatening complications include increased intracranial pressure, intracranial bleeding, pancreatic inflammation, acute kidney failure, and cardiac arrest. Death generally occurs 6 to 16 days after the poisoning. Mushroom poisoning is more common in Europe than in America. Up to the mid-20th century, the mortality rate was around 60-70%, but this has been greatly reduced with advances in medical care. A review of death cap poisoning throughout Europe from 1971 to 1980 found the overall mortality rate to be 22.4%. This has fallen further in more recent surveys to around 10-15%. Consumption of the death cap is a medical emergency requiring hospitalization. The four main categories of therapy for poisoning are preliminary medical care, supportive measures, specific treatments, and liver transplantation. Preliminary care consists of gastric decontamination with either activated carbon or gastric lavage, due to the delay between ingestion and the first symptoms of poisoning, it is common for patients to arrive for treatment many hours after ingestion, potentially reducing the efficacy of these interventions. 
supportive measures are directed towards treating the dehydration which results from fluid loss during the gastrointestinal phase of intoxication and correction of metabolic acidosis, hypoglycemia, electrolyte imbalances, and impaired coagulation. Cited texts No definitive antidote is available, but some specific treatments have been shown to improve survivability. High-dose continuous intravenous penicillin G has been reported to be of benefit, though the exact mechanism is unknown, and trials with cephalosporins show promise. Some evidence indicates intravenous silibonin, an extract from the blessed milk thistle, may be beneficial in reducing the effects of death cap poisoning. A long-term clinical trial of intravenous silibonin began in the U.S. in 2010. Silibonin prevents the uptake of omatoxins by liver cells, thereby protecting undamaged liver tissue, it also stimulates DNA-dependent RNA polymerases, leading to an increase in RNA synthesis. According to one report based on a treatment of 60 patients with silibonin, patients who started the drug within 96 hours of ingesting the mushroom and who still had intact kidney function all survived. As of February 2014 supporting research has not yet been published. SLCO1B3 has been identified as the human hepatic uptake transporter for omatoxins. Moreover, Substrates and inhibitors of that protein among others rifampicin, penicillin, silibonin, antimanide, paclitaxel, cyclosporin, and prednisolone may be useful for the treatment of human omatoxin poisoning. N-acetylcysteine has shown promise in combination with other therapies. Animal studies indicate the omatoxins deplete hepatic glutathione. N-acetylcysteine serves as a glutathione precursor and may therefore prevent reduced glutathione levels and subsequent liver damage. None of the antidotes used have undergone prospective, randomized clinical trials, and only anecdotal support is available. Silibonin and N-acetylcysteine appear to be the therapies with the most potential benefit. Repeated doses of activated carbon may be helpful by absorbing any toxins returned to the gastrointestinal tract following enterohepatic circulation. Other methods of enhancing the elimination of the toxins have been trialed, techniques such as hemodialysis, hemoperfusion, plasmapheresis, and peritoneal dialysis have occasionally yielded success, but overall do not appear to improve outcome. In patients developing liver failure, a liver transplant is often the only option to prevent death. Liver transplants have become a well-established option in omatoxin poisoning. This is a complicated issue, however, as transplants themselves may have significant complications and mortality, patients require long-term immunosuppression to maintain the transplant. That being the case, the criteria have been reassessed, such as onset of symptoms, prothrombin time, serum bilirubin, and presence of encephalopathy, for determining at what point a transplant becomes necessary for survival. Evidence suggests, although survival rates have improved with modern medical treatment, in patients with moderate to severe poisoning, up to half of those who did recover suffered permanent liver damage. A follow-up study has shown most survivors recover completely without any sequelae if treated within 36 hours of mushroom ingestion. Several historical figures may have died from a phalloids poisoning. These were either accidental poisonings or assassination plots. Alleged victims of this kind of poisoning include Roman Emperor Claudius, Pope Clement VII, the Russian Tsaritsa Natalia Narishkina, and Holy Roman Emperor Charles VI. R. Gordon Wasson recounted the details of these deaths, noting the likelihood of ammonita poisoning. In the case of Clement VII, 
the illness that led to his death lasted five months, making the case inconsistent with omatoxin poisoning. Natalia Narishkina is said to have consumed a large quantity of pickled mushrooms prior to her death. It is unclear whether the mushrooms themselves were poisonous or if she succumbed to food poisoning. Charles VI experienced indigestion after eating a dish of sautéed mushrooms. This led to an illness from which he died ten days later symptomatology consistent with omatoxin poisoning. His death led to the War of the Austrian Succession. Noted Voltaire, this dish of mushrooms changed the destiny of Europe. The case of Claudius poisoning is more complex. Claudius was known to have been very fond of eating Caesar's mushroom. Following his death, many sources have attributed it to his being fed a meal of death caps instead of Caesar's mushrooms. Ancient authors, such as Tacitus and Suetonius, are unanimous about poison having been added to the mushroom dish, rather than the dish having been prepared from poisonous mushrooms. Wasson speculated the poison used to kill Claudius was derived from death caps, with a fatal dose of an unknown poison being administered later during his illness.